Good morning. It's a beautiful morning, and we're happy to be able to celebrate a, a major event at, at Forte State University. Uh, the university is very proud to announce the, the publishing, the first edition, of a brand new scholarly journal, uh, which will focus on uh, the, our, our kind of institutions, comprehensive uh, state universities. The Teacher Scholar, the Journal of State Comprehensive Universities, becomes uh, the only uh, such journal in the United States. And it's very, very important, I think, for our kind of institutions that we have such a scholarly outlet. Some people are confused by the concept of a comprehensive uh, university that is state-supported or a state comprehensive university. And I think the, there are three things that separate these institutions apart from other universities, land-grant universities and the major research universities. Uh, these institutions are all, first, very much concerned about access. Uh, access and opportunity. Uh, and that really fits Fort Hayes and really most of the ASCU institutions that are involved as, as uh, state comprehensive universities. Secondly, these institutions are amazingly student-centered institutions. They place the student at the heart of the enterprise of, the, of education, uh, both in a research environment as well as in an educational environment. And third, they are stewards of place. Uh, they are very much in favor of engaging their faculty, their students, with their communities and region. And they reach out and get involved really in distance learning and a lot of other things like that that uh, supports the growth of the, their community and their region. So as, a, as an institution that clearly is a state comprehensive university, it's only appropriate that Fort Hayes House uh, is the place that houses this, uh, this important journal. At, at this activity uh, was the result of an action plan. Everyone always wonders what happens to action plans. And uh, uh, the group of faculty proposed this concept and idea of a, of a journal uh, as an action plan. It was evaluated very highly by the Strategic Planning Committee and was funded. Uh, and has now become a reality. So this is a good example of what happens when you have a grassroots concept and idea that is developed and put <coughs> forward and is able to uh, be funded. Uh, it places us really in a unique position. And so I want to thank all of the faculty and staff that have been involved developing the original action plan, developing the concept, and making this a reality. At this time, I'd like to introduce the provost at Fort Hayes State University, Dr. Larry Gould, to uh, talk about the academic benefits of this activity. Thank you, President Hammond. Wow, An another example of Fort Hayes State University stepping up its game. Um, it seems every other day, or every other week, whatever it may be, in terms of the time period you want to choose, Fort Hayes State University is doing something new and, and different. And that's extremely impressive not only here for you folks, but it's impressive around the country and, and in many places beyond the, the borders of the United States. So let me say this, though. This new journal is not just about Fort Hayes State University stepping up its game. It's also about more than state comprehensive universities. It's about the progress of the reform of higher education in this country and the world beyond. It's about American higher education reform because there are all kinds of things happening from the Spellings Commission to what's happening in terms of critiques of higher education about accountability and affordability, as Dr. Hammond said. Fort Hayes State is on the forefront of that. In addition, you talk about state comprehensive universities. More state comprehensive universities are operating in China and other places in the world than any other kind of institution. Part of what we're doing is basically educating the rest of the world with regard to how higher education administration works. There's no doubt about it. Each day we have some new problem or some new opportunity to address with regard to our partnerships. And we do that in a way in, in a way that transmits information to other parts of the world and suggests to them how they might run their higher education system. And we learn from them as well. It's also about, this journal, is also about the wasted effort to impose a single standard of excellence on all institutions of higher education, as implied in several of the national critiques of higher education. Multiple visions of excellence and multiple purposes should and must be considered as part of the reform of higher education nationally and worldwide. 
state comprehensive universities need to be a part of that discussion because we don't want a single standard of excellence imposed upon us. And it's important that the higher education system in this country understands that there are multiple visions of excellence. The differences in institutions of higher education are diverse and too complex for any single set performance measures or standard of excellence. This journal is all about sending the message that one size does not fit all. And we're going to see that shortly in terms of qualified admissions in this state. It's again about how FHSU is out front in teaching the world about what, when, how, and why this reform is happening. It's about FHSU's expanding intellectual footprint nationwide. More and more, you've heard about the carbon footprint. They want to restrict that. We've got an intellectual footprint. We want to expand that. That intellectual footprint is being known far and wide, from Washington to Beijing. And I think that's important in terms of this journal being able to continue to send that message. It's a journal about how well state comprehensive universities can meet and go beyond their existing mission through innovation, imagination, creativity, and excellence. Access, affordability, and accountability, as Dr. Hammond said, will remain the watchwords of the reform movement. But SCUs will, out, will define these forces in new and different ways. Reform never works well without communication. It will be the purpose of this journal to communicate the advances and the possibilities of the reform movement, not only to higher education, but to public intellectuals, policymakers, to the public at large. I ask you to join us in this endeavor. Read what your colleagues have to say about the reform movement in higher education, and especially state comprehensive universities, and contribute whenever you can. Teacher Scholar is all about FHSU's responsibilities in this revolution in higher education. Make sure that we have a voice. I ask you to join us. The journal would not have happened without the collaboration of a number of very important people. Two are here with us this morning. One of those is Steve Trout, and I'd like to introduce Steve to say a few words. Steve. You'll have to forgive me if I wave this around as I speak. I'm, uh, I'm so and we proud. also have copies in the back. And we also have copies in the back for you to pick up, but I'm, I'm so proud of this, I just can't talk about it without having a copy in my hand. Um, it was my pleasure to serve as the editor-in-chief for uh, the first issue, and um, I think that this journal is important in all different kinds of ways. Um, one thing I would emphasize about issue one is that uh, within the 60-some pages here, what you're really getting is a primer on this type of institution. This, this first issue was really designed as something that, that you could hand a brand new faculty member at an institution like Fort Hayes State University and say, read this, and you will understand the nature of the institution that you work for, you'll understand its history, you'll understand its values, you'll understand some of the challenges that you will face as a faculty member as you make that often difficult adjustment moving from a Division I institution where you were trained in your discipline, where you received your doctorate, and, and now the state comprehensive institution with a different set of priorities where you may very well be spending your career. And so we put this issue together really with, with that sort of notion in mind. Okay? Um, one other thing I would add is that we have uh, great ambitions for this journal. It's our hope that uh, we will have uh, special issues in the future that are built around particular topics that are, that are critical uh, in, the, in the culture of state comprehensive universities. Uh, we're envisioning uh, future special issues, for example, on graduate education at state comprehensives, uh, which I think would be very important. Uh, we also have talked about a special issue on the way in which state comprehensive universities uh, are dealing with, with the current budgetary crisis, uh, with the recession in the United States. Uh, institutions like ours tend to be lean and mean operations where people work very, very hard. And guess what? We tend to be among the institutions that are hardest hit uh, during economic downturns. So uh, that will just give you some idea of the sorts of, uh, of issues that we want to address in, in future issues. Um, I want to acknowledge the, uh, the support and contributions of several other people who are here uh, today and some who are not. 
uh, without John Allen in the university print shop, which just does outstanding work. As you'll see when you look through this journal, uh, this could not have happened. Uh, I want to acknowledge the support of Dr. Tim Crowley, uh, the dean of our graduate school, who really was instrumental in making this happen. Um, some other people here on campus contributed uh, in various ways editorially to this first issue, and they include Professor Robert Lures from CTEL, and also uh, Professor Robert Scott, who's chair of the Justice Studies uh, Department. Um, also, I want to point out that now that I am chair of the Department of English, and I have a few other things to do, just a few, um, I'm not going to be editing the journal single-handedly from this point on. I have the assistance of two colleagues, uh, Dr. Amy Cummins, who is, who is with us today, uh, is currently serving as my assistant editor, and Dr. Eric Leuschner uh, will take over as, uh, as the co-editor uh, in the spring semester. Okay? And finally, a person who was uh, perhaps more important than anybody I've mentioned so far in the creation of this first issue is Hong Wong, who oversaw the fabulous online version of this journal, and she'll talk for a moment about some of those features. Thank you. Dr. Chowd. Well, Dr. Chowd, is waving this print version, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should bring the computer or iPhone to show it. <laughs> uh, firstly, I want to thank my wonderful colleagues in the back from CTO because I think it's a wonderful teamwork for the online version of the journal. Just some, you know, a few names to mention. My student worker, Tony Hu, a graduate student from the Instructional Technology Program. Andy works on the podcast with me and also Dr. Lurs. Eva Gould here with the proofreading. So lots of yes. people get involved in this. So I want to thank my wonderful co-workers in CTL first. What I want to do is I really want to uh, briefly introduce some special features of the online version. We are trying to think about uh, designing the online version more user-friendly. and uh, Add some features which the, um, the print version uh, are not able to access. So some special features include the podcasts created to introduce the authors and their articles with a nice background music, and also um, using JavaScript to, to a mouse over function to display the references in the article, a floating window to show the hyperlinks and the headings within each article. And finally, we also added the online submission um, feature. Uh, authors can submit the manuscript to the editor directly online through the contact link. Yes, thank you. If, Dr. Hammond, if I can yeah. interrupt, just to acknowledge one other person uh, who is mentioned in the press release, but I wanted to offer just a few more words here. That's Joshua Smith, who is a, a graduate student in the graphic design program at Fort Hayes State, who designed this beautiful first issue. Thank you. I think everyone's been covered. I was wondering I so. if you were going to cover Josh or not. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, I, it, I think this is an important day because this is a, a journal that I believe will have tremendous life, uh, both in paper and online. Uh, I think if you take the time to search and visit the journal online, you will be impressed, especially if you spend time looking at other journals that are available online. Ours is uh, by far one of the most advanced uh, electronic journals uh, available today. Uh, it is an exciting time, <clears throat> and uh, Provost Gould made the point about uh, state comprehensive universities are not just found in the United States. Uh, they are really found worldwide. And uh, there are a lot of changes going on in, in the world today. Uh, you know, we're familiar with the problems and the crises and the opportunities that we face here with our financial uh, crisis. Uh, but I will be leaving in a couple of days for a quick three-day trip to China, which just changed their Minister of Education in midstream. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, uh, especially in that country. Uh, but they have gone in and made a switch from one particular person to another. That, I believe, is going to uh, change the direction of, uh, of China's state-supported institutions. And we look forward to uh, really working very, very closely with them. And I think there's a lot they can learn from us and a lot we can learn from them. And I believe this journal can play a major international role as well as a role here in the United States. Thank you very much for coming. Are there any questions for any of the uh, seven people that were introduced in vain? Dr. Hannon? Yes. Um, how often will this be printed and how is it going to be distributed? Well, the second question I can answer uh, because it will be distributed both uh, in hardback copy, as you've seen, 
Uh, and we'd like to continue to do that as long as it's fiscally possible to do it. Uh, but it, it's primarily designed to be an online journal, and so that will never be compromised. But it's our hope that we will always be able to provide uh, uh, hard copies as well. But as you know, in the field today uh, of uh, scholarly journals, uh, research is moving more and more online, so the online component is a lot more important uh, to, to the world than, uh, uh, of uh, scholarly activity than the printed version. Uh, but libraries still like to hold things in their hand, and especially old, decrepit English professors who are now chairs like to be able to feel uh, the, the paper product, so I'm sure we will continue to do that. Uh, on the uh, map number of times, uh, I would yield to either Provo School or to... Yeah, I, can, I can answer that. It, it's, it's an annual journal. It will come out once a year. Um, I think as it, um, as it um, uh, receives more and more attention, and as we receive more submissions, then I think we can ultimately move it to a twice a year publication. The, the online version creates a, a dialogue uh, between uh, the, uh, the, the scholars that have presented material and the public. And so while it's only published once or twice a year, the give and take that yeah. goes back and forth in the, uh, uh, in the online version uh, continues to change the knowledge and the exchange of knowledge that takes place uh, across the, uh, uh, you know, the, the world, I guess, is be the best way to say. And uh, so it isn't as important how many times it's printed, it's can you support an online journal that is constantly interacting with the public, and that's what we've designed, that kind of product. Any other questions? Thank you very much.